Hey guys, just giving you the overhead view of the piles. So this one there, that's pile one with that kind of magenta butterfly. This is pile, this is the crystal unicorn tarot. This one here with the purple and green butterfly, that is the rainbow unicorn tarot. Sorry, the rainbow. Oh, it's two unicorn decks. Oh my goodness. I didn't realize. Yes. The Rainbow Unicorn Tarot. And this one is the Whimsical Tarot. How interesting. I didn't even notice there were two unicorn decks. Oops. All right, guys. I right, thank you. I'm going to show you guys um, the boxes in a moment. Royal family, welcome to my channel. And today we're asking, what have they realized about you um, and the connection? So we have three pals. We have the crystal unicorn tarot and it's this magenta butterfly we have the rainbow unicorn tarot and it has no box so i have to show you the back of the card because of indie deck and we have the whimsical tarot and we have i like to call this one the carnival butterfly okay so do you think pick your pal and i'm going to be back with you really take care hey pal one if you choose the crystal unicorn um tarot this is going to be a reading and today we're asking what has your person realized about you and this connection so what we're going to do <clears throat> we're going to go into this messages from the ancestors um, oracle deck it's pretty new and we're going to get a significator for your person's energy towards you at this time Underneath the deck, we have the inventor. All right. Um, and if you notice how powered up this person's third eye is. So your person's fine trying to find solutions. Okay, solutions. Because um, it says here ingenuity, it says the inventor. Solutions are trying to figure out how to get this relationship back on the right track and for it to th take off and for it to be successful and for it to honor um, the kind of ethereal quality that this relationship has. Um, I think for a lot of them, um, they are actively and deliberately um, establishing a psychic and intuitive connection with you right now. Because maybe they can't communicate just yet in the 3D. I don't think this person has the plan ready. That I think they're trying to formulate a plan. But I don't think they have the, the plan ready yet. See all these co these cogs here in the wheel are still turning. So they're not sure how they're going to do it as yet. So in the meantime, are they, they're going to keep you engaged with this intuitive communication that they have going on. Del it's deliberate. Okay, it's deliberate. Um, I do see here that this is an eagle. Um, and eagles are about Aquarian energy, sometimes Scorpionic energy. Um, and it always talks about enlightenment, especially spiritual enlightenment, um, higher perspectives. Um, and it's, it's there on the book. I do think as well that a person is doing a lot of research, um, about intuitive connections or they could be doing a lot of research about um maybe some project they have in mind that's going to get you guys back together um for some of them they might be going through law books or consulting someone who has some sort of expertise um because they need that kind of a help and assistance in order to get where they want to go and where they want to go is but is um to come to come to you come to you energy towards you right now the singer 
and it says voice right on top here. Um, this person wants to declare their love. It's as simple as that. They want to declare their love. They want to bear their soul. I mean, if we look at this card, um, the most, the part that's most out, um, is the chest. So they want to make a full breast of it, um, and talk about their love. They want to talk about how they have changed. Um, they want to talk about how they see the future. They want to talk about the past because this person has been facing their past. Um, they want to talk about God, spirit, creator, universe. Their hands are stretched to the heavens. And they also want to talk about love. And all this pink and red here. Um, this person's drawn towards you. Um, I think that maybe you have a beautiful voice. Maybe you are a singer. Um, and this person's like secretly watching you. They're watching you perform. They're watching you live your life. Um, and they're just magnetized, um, towards you right now. Um, they see us very wise. I see this was, this woman has very long hair. Um, and here's always a symbol of wisdom, especially spiritual wisdom. So they see that in you. It's like, so you are the complete package. Now voices always remind me of course of sword energy um and because the woman here it's queen of swords energy um so they see you as dependable they see you as honest they see you as having beautiful boundaries um they see you as authentic you're out there and you're out there um who can't deal with it that's their problem right that's not your problem. And they, they greatly admire that because I feel like we're tapping into someone who needs approval from others. So you're there, unapologetic, living your life, singing your bloody soul song. Um, you have like, like captivated this person. And that's the best way I can describe that. You've captivated this person. Maybe that's something that they realize that um, you have a lot more power over them than they thought. All right, so let's look at what they've realized. Ten of Wands. All right, so they feel burdened, and I feel like they're burdened um, by knowledge, but I also feel like they're burdened by their coins, their pentacles. I think they have, they have, they're having some sort of issues with their finances right now. And I do think, you know, they can't see the forest for the, tree, for the trees right now. You know, it's like everything kind of feels overwhelming. Um, I do think they're looking for solutions. We saw that. But they have a lot on their plate. Um, and then, I don't want to say you're a complication, but you're a complication. You know, you're something else that they need to think about, that they have been thinking about. So when they're not thinking about their finances, they're, they're thinking about you. All right, so what have they realized? Let's have a look. Okay. We have these of... Swords in reverse. <laughs> um, we have the Eight of Swords. What have they realized about you and the connection? We have Page of Pentacles. Two of Swords. Load, load. Load, guys. Um, Ace of Pentacles. And we have the moon. Okay. That's how my dad used to say the moon. The moon. <laughs> oh, he loved full moons. He loved to be out there looking at the moon. All right. So what have they realized about you and this connection? What they realize is um, they lied to you. They lied to you. Um, but they didn't realize at the time that they were really lying to themselves um, and basically sabotaging um, this connection and sabotaging their own happiness. I think 
This is someone who screwed you over. Stabbed you in the back with this knife, okay? Um, hid things from you and told you lies. Um, <laughs> I'm hearing that song. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies, right? Um, this person told you lies, sweet little, sweet little lies, right? But those sweet little lies kind of added up. And now they are here caught in the lies that they told. They're caught in the lies that they told. They've been, you know, hoisted on their own petard, you know. They're now caught in their lies. They're well, well and truly caught. Look, they're bound. And they're bound by their lies. Um, and it's come at a time... It, it's come at a time when they are seeing just how stable, dependable, prosperous, and st steady and, you know, all those things. You're, you're a rock. You're a rock upon which they think they can build. Um, some kind of legacy that they've always had in mind. So they realize now that, it, that it's you. But they've told so many lies that in order for them to reach out um, and really rebuild this foundation and establish a measure of trust, they have to face all those lies that they told. They have to face all, they have to make things right. They have to face all the lies um, they're told. They have to tell all these things that they've kept in the dark from you. They have to reveal it. And this scares the bejesus out of this person we hear in Two of Swords. This scares the bejesus out of this person. Their intuitions tell them this is the only way. But the mind is telling them, mm, mm, don't do it, buddy. <laughs> Don't do it. But they want this. They want this. And the only way to get to this is to face this. I feel like this person's going to reach out to you. We have this page of pentacles here. Um, I don't get this person speaking the truth just yet. They got they got to think about this a little bit more. Um, they feel like if they do tell you the truth and do tell you these secrets, um, that they have been hiding, that they will lose you. And then they're not that strong um to deal with that sort of rejection and abandonment just yet. But at the same time, this Ace of Pentacles um is calling them. Whatever will they do? <laughs> but you know, this is a lie. Once you start lying, then you have to lie to come up with the first lie. And then it just keeps going on and on. And before you know it, um, you're, you're surrounded by all these lies that you told. What's the most important message that spirit wants you to know about your situation? So what have they realized? They realized that they were lying to you, but they were also lying to themselves. And whilst they thought they were screwing you over, they were really just screwing over themselves. They realize that now. They realize that they are well and truly trapped wherever they are. And the only way to get out is through... Um, and they have to untell all the lies that they have told, whether it is to you, whether it is to self, whether it is to others. Um, they realize that it's like you're moving on. Um, and if they don't reach out soon, that they're going to lose you. But again, reaching out means telling, uh, talking about these things that happened in the past and they're not ready for that yet. What have they realized? They realize that you're a lot more stable 
um, than they initially pegged you for. Okay, I don't think that this person took a hard, long look at you. Um, the first time they met you, I think they were just living this kind of frivolous kind of life. Um, and they put you in some sort of box without really seeing who you were. And they did that because um, this person has a lot of wounds from the past. And these wounds are, these wounds are just now surfacing. So there's a lot of pain, a lot of betrayal, um, and they just judged you based on their past experiences. And I've also realized that. What is spirit? What's the most important message that spirit wants you to know? And underneath it, like we have yin and yang. So spirit is saying, you know, this is your person, right? Um, this is a fated connection. You guys are meant to come together like you guys came together. But it is only going to work if both persons are given equal energy um, to this connection. And it's very much like, um, you know, like the twin ring. The masculine is given energy, the feminine is given energy, and that's how it works. When one doesn't give energy, then the ring becomes vulnerable or the connection becomes vulnerable and they are prone to attack. What does spirit want your person to know right now? Okay, we have two cards. All right, no problem. I'll take it. All right, so this person is becoming, okay? And they're becoming the divine masculine. Whether they're male, female, in body, or they don't identify, what, what, whatever it is, um, they're, they're, they're harnessing this masculine energy. And masculine energy um, is about action, okay? It's about action. That's the action part of self. It's how we navigate in society. Um, it's, it's given structure and form, um, to a dream that has been created. Okay. So the Empress creates, but, n and you are the one that kind of grounded this connection, right? You got the vision of it, you intuited it, and then you kind of ground this connection. But now the masculine steps in, gives it structure and form and takes it to where it needs to go. All right. So you created it. And now they need to step into their power um, and give it form. Give it a form. Put it out there into the world. We also have here spiritual maturity. So, and it's both of you um, climbing this mountain. So, both of you guys are on the path um, of ascension. Um, I feel like you guys were navigating this ascension part alone. Um, and then you guys had this fated meeting somewhere here. So you're, you're well on your way. And both of you, even though you think that your person is leagues behind you, um, they are not. In fact, both of you are on par with each other. It's just that you might be processing um, issues um, in a different way. Um, with different people. Maybe this person is processing a lot of their issues with their intimate partner and family members. And maybe you're processing the same issues, but with co-workers and friends. But Spirit saying both of you guys are on the same level. You're on the same level. You're on the same path. You're processing the same issues. And you're heading in the same direction. So you guys are on the same page. With this Divine Masculine card as well, I'm also getting that you um, are also meant to step into and heal your masculine energy. And that is about taking action. So if there's something that you've been procrastinating with and not taking action on, whether it's with work or even in this relationship, Spirit is saying stop giving your power away and take the action that you intuitively you know you need to take at this time. Okay? All right. Um, let us see what, um, let's get some 3D messages from your person. 3D messages from your person. Um, after this, I'm going to go to the extended and we're going to get a semi-trans message from my main guy, Janice, um, about this situation. I, I'm not sure what will come through, whether it's going to be a person coming through or it's just a general message about your situation, but I will ask Janice. Um, we're going to look at your person's thoughts and feelings for you. We're going to look at their next actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading. And then we're going to get some messages 
from the ancestors. But if you can't join me, um, in the extended, I'm going to give you some advice from um, spirit in a moment. All right. So we have, what's the first thing they want you to know? Um, they do feel this true love connection with you. It says this love is emotional, physical, and unconditional. And I think we got that from that first card underneath the deck because you were engaging them on every level and they were trying to find solutions on every level in order um, to engage with you in order to give this relationship form um, in the 3D. So they do feel this true love connection with you. Um, it is engaging them on an emotional level, in their heart space, physical level. I did feel a lot of energy there. And of course, it's unconditional and spiritual, right? We saw that intuitive connection that you guys had. What else does your person want you to know? We have different pages. It says, you and this person don't share the same vision. All right, so what am I getting? What am I getting from that? Um, I'm feeling, though, like this is past energy. Is it? No, it's not. No, it's present energy. It is present energy. I think that you envision this person like turning up immediately um, with their truth um, and their declarations of love, but they are still trying to save face. They're still trying to save face. So um, there's still some maturing that needs to go that needs to happen with this person. There's still some maturing. Um, but they're not going to come towards you um, as quick as you think. They're still trying to find ways to maybe circumvent <laughs> telling the truth, but it's not going to happen. It's the only way. It is the only way. What else do they want you to know? We have vulnerability. So they want to be vulnerable. And I want you to know that you can also feel safe um, in their presence and like open up yourself to them. It says you can be completely open with this person. Um, I think this person trusts you and they want you to trust them um, again. And trust that you're not going to stab them, that they're not going to stab you in the back. We have longing. So I do think that they are longing for you. You need to be in your energy, in your presence, for you to look at them. Um, with respect and awe like you did before. And it says someone is secretly learning for you. I think um, as well that they are just holding their feelings very deep inside. Um, I don't think they're discussing you with many people. If they are discussing you, it's going to be with one friend or something like that. And it's someone very close to them. Okay, but they are missing you. Um, and... It's all the more harder because they can't discuss it with many people. This is, this is definitely um, a secret love. What is the advice from spirit right now? What's the advice from spirit? Underneath the deck, we have rebirth. It says, no matter what happens, you can find new wings. Rise from the past. Accept the positive changes that are coming. So I think you've been through it with this person. Okay, and maybe at, the, at one point in time, maybe they had left you for dead. Okay? Um, but out of that pain, out of that agony, um, you were reborn into this magnificent creature. Um, that they are just inex inexplicably um, drawn towards and magnetized towards right now. I think they are inspired by you. We have change. You are transforming. <laughs> exactly. You are transforming. And maybe that's why I use the butterfly energy today. Let go of the past. So we have the same message. Let go of the past. Embrace the light. And joy of this new day. So you've been through a lot of tough times with this person. And Spirit is saying this is not time to regurgitate the past. Because 
this person is becoming a new person just as a, just as how you have transformed um yourself okay so allow these changes to happen within you and when this person comes forward um it's not a time to hold on to any kind of hate and resentment in your heart and i mean it's going to be a process it doesn't happen overnight right it is going to be a process but spirit is saying um if you can release the past with this person and if you can release your past of you know past pain um and betrayal in relationships then this can transform into something just as magnificent um as a transformation that you have undergone okay but it requires forgiveness and it requires forward facing and not regurgitating that's what it requires you know all right my love so if you're able to join me next tended i'll start with that semi-trans message and then work our way through to the messages from the ancestors okay all right my love let's you know thank you Thank you for everything that you do for this channel. Just, you know, coming on here and watching. Um, it really helps our community expand and grow. And I'm grateful to you. Take care. Bye. Hey, pal, to if you chose the unicorn tarot, this is going to be your reading. All right. So let's get into this. And we're looking at what have they realized about you and the connection. <clears throat> I feel like in this part, maybe um, we waited a long time for this person because I'm here and I'm waiting for my nephews to come home. Um, they came to spend the night because they, they went out partying. Um, and I haven't seen them return yet. So I was just looking out for them. It's one of those early morning parties that start at 2 a.m. and end at 8. And it's now 10 and I haven't seen them. So I keep looking out the window. But I know they're probably still partying, right? Anyways, underneath the deck, you guys can watch part one. Because this was actually the significator um, in part one, okay? So the energy underneath the deck. I think, I think this person is very connected to music. That's number one. And they may even receive um, messages from music about you. Um, they may hear your voice um, just randomly. Um, they may um, hear your voice in their dreams. Um, they may remember you talking to them about a particular issue. So they keep hearing your voice um, in their head. Maybe they think you have a good voice. Maybe you are a singer. Okay. Or they could be a singer. But there's something about your voice that they absolutely enjoy. It turns them on. It makes them feel passionate. And it's, it's, it grounds them. It grounds them. Your, your voice grounds this person. This person in, the, in that red. Um, it grounds them. Okay, so let's get a significator we have the tree and even that you know it speaks to grounding it and um this is what they think you are solid you're, you're absolutely solid um they think you're very grounded but this tree half of the tree is on on land and the half of the the other half of the tree um is in the water so there's something about your versatility and adaptability that they enjoy but this card also says balance so you're very in touch with your emotions yes but um, you don't get taken away by the tide. Um, you're very grounded and you're like your head and your heart kind of have a very symbiotic relationship. Um, and they really appreciate that about you. Um, there's something about you that they can see themselves growing something with you. Starting their own family tree <laughs> with you. Um, that kind of thing. But that card balance. Um... They tell me they, they just think you're versatile, absolutely versatile. 
Um, with this tree thing, again, I think they think you're wise and knowledgeable because, you know, trees always have a lot of wisdom and knowledge. And then we've always had like the tree people and they're also a source of wisdom and knowledge. So they see that. Um, they see like you've built a good foundation from yourself and, and you're thriving, you're expanding. Um, nothing, e nothing f easily fails you when hard times come. Um, you bend, you don't break. Um, and your roots go so deep that you can't be uprooted. Um, they see you as family. That's what I'm getting. They see you as family. They may see you also as someone that may have stepped away, the one that got away. But they see you as family. Um, and there's something magical about you. Because even the leaves in the tree in the back here look like stars. So they may see a star family to them. But you're, you're, you're solid. You're solid. Like you know, those real sort of salt of the earth people. That's how they see you. That's You're stronger than people think. I'm also getting that. This person sees you doing a lot of healing work and they're realizing that that healing work that you're doing um, is transforming um, your family tree. And it's like they're being inspired um, to do that for their ancestral line. They feel that you are very much protected by the ancestors and that you're very special. They don't see you as ordinary. That's very special. I mean, you have had your own share of obstacles and challenges, and yet you're here. You're rooted, you're firm. And they admire you. I just feel just so much admiration um, from that card. Okay. All right. So let's see what are they thinking. Um, uh, what? Sorry. Why am I saying thinking and feeling? <laughs> What have they realized about you and this connection? And it's the first time that I'm using this deck. I, I recently got it. I know what I like about this deck. You have ordinary horses, but they're, they're, they have the unicorn horn. So it's like, you know, Finding the mystical, the fantastical um, in the ordinary. That's what I like about this deck. And I feel like that's what, how this person sees you. Um, you're as, just as rooted as anyone can ever want you to be. Um, you're very grounded, very down to earth. But at the same time, there's this very mystical quality, this ethereal quality that people just can't, they can't figure out who you are. They can't figure out who you are. You're a mystery. You don't fit into a box. Let's see what they have realized. Um, four of Cups. I didn't even get the card underneath the deck. Let me do that again. Sorry, guys. I didn't get the card underneath the deck. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. It might still be the Four of Cups. Who knows? All right, we have the Eight of Wands, okay. And that is the underlying energy. It means like swift movement forward, charging forward, the arrows of love. So this person is very much in love. Um, and the uh, and Eight of Wands is also about communication. So they might want to um, chat to you, talk to you. We did have that voice card underneath the deck. Um, eight of Wands is also about declaring your love. So they may want to do that. Let's, let's, let's see what else is here. What have they realized about you and the connection? What have they realized? All right, we have the Four of Wands. That's very interesting. And it says completion. We have the Knight of... I think this is pentacles. Yes, it's the knight of pentacles. 
And it's weird because it has the Torah sign um, on its hindquarters. And also um, at the breastplate as well. We have the lovers. We have the four of swords and it says truce. And I'm really getting pulled to this ace of swords that's there. Well, this is quite a lineup. Okay. We have justice. And we have the queen of cups. Which is interesting because just from this, you get in that same grounded but emotionally connected um, kind of vibe that we were picking up before. Okay, so let, let's see. What have they realized about you and this connection? We have the four of wands and we have the lovers. Okay. So what do I get from this? This person thinks that you are their soulmate, their counterpart, their twin flame. Okay, lovers and the four of wands. And in this deck, it says completion. So they feel like you complete them, that like you're complementary to who they are, like you are the other half of their soul. Um, and they feel very passionate about you. They feel very, very passionate about you. Um, and it's like you guys have come a long way because I see the mountain again in the background here, right? So you guys have had your challenges. Um, you guys have gone through transformations because even this um, angel, this unicorn angel, has butterfly wings. Okay, so you've gone both gone through some powerful transformations um, together. Okay, so they see you um, as the one. They see you as the one, um, and they see you as someone that they want to gradually offer something stable to now this is the knight of pentacles um he may move slow he might he just might but when he comes through and he approaches he's dependable and he's someone that you can count on um and in this respect this is how you are inspiring this person because you are dependable and, and anybody can count on you and they want to mirror back that same energy right they want to match energy for energy okay because they see that it's like with you, their dreams can come true. Night of dream clashes. With you, their dreams can come true. And they dream of you all the time. They dream of going places with you. They think about you guys playing together. They think about you guys lying down in the same bed. Um, they think about you guys going on vacation together. Get right here. Maybe hanging out at a pub together. I see that cup in her hand. Having some a lobster dinner, whatever it is. I think this person dreams about you a lot. And it's like, yo, you guys, it's like every night you guys are on a different adventure. So this person's living a whole life with you um, in their heads, basically. But they think that you're the one. They do. They do think that you're the one. Um, and they want to pull this connection back together. Um, maybe in the past, um, this person may have hurt you. So you just see three of swords in that four of swords there. Um, they may have hurt you, maybe left you for dead there. Okay. Um, but through the transformative process, um, they have gone, they're gone. They realize that they have to make things right. So we have justice here, which is balance. And then we also started with balance. Okay. So this person, um, what is occupying their mind is that and what they have realized is that they have to bring balance back into back to this relationship there has been an injustice um that was done and they have to make things right that's what they're getting they have to make things right um what have they realized um for some of you guys you have you may have um made some sort of prophecy um told this person something and it looks like it, it might have happened so they're realizing that you're pretty psychic you're in the know um they think that you are loving they think that you are giving um and they know or they realize that 
you will only give your heart, you will only give your cup to someone special. And apparently you think that they are very special. So this is doing a lot for their ego. Um, they want to be worthy of your love. They do. And I feel like this person, they express their love through like buying things for their partner. So gift giving and, you know, trying to take care of their partner. That's acts of good. Let's call it acts of service gifts, right? That's how this person expressed their love. I don't think they're very good at saying things. I think that's your forte because you are the one underneath the deck that had the voice, right? I don't think this person got the voice. I think this person, they got the action. They got the action. So they want to show you how much they love you. What have they realized? That if they don't move, don't move fast, they're gonna they're gonna lose you. Um they see like there's some ship. I know ships coming in. Let's think about that ad adage. Ships coming in. A ship is an opportunity. Um, an opp opportunity to go on an adventure, an opportunity um, to search for your own treasure, right? So they think that there's some kind of ship that's coming in for you that's going to take you away from them. Maybe some of you um, are thinking of moving and they know that. So they feel like they have to make their move before that happens. Others of you, maybe they've been observing you and they see that somebody's there bombing around. So they know that they can't allow the ship they can't allow you to board the ship. They have to tell you how they feel. They have to show you how they feel. I, I don't think this person realized how much they loved you. I think this is something that they kind of blanked out or repressed for a long time. Until that moment when they realized that they were lost and then all the, it's like a river that bursts its banks. Um, it all just came spewing out. But they want to make things right. I think this person thinks a lot about the past. Um, and they want to talk about that and they want to tell you the truth about what happened in the past. There's something that happened in the past here. They wish they had done things differently. They do. I mean, just look at how the scales are. They know that they, they did you an injustice. You know? So they're looking back on this time and they're seeing, they're seeing how much pain they caused. And I don't think that this person, um, accountability may not have been their forte. I'm really drawn to that like big gold chain around um, the unicorn's neck. Maybe in the past this person um, was very showy. Um, you know, they would have all the brands and the jewelry and they're kind of flashy, um, like a show, a real show person. But you know, that was like their armor, right? They, want, they didn't want people to see um, the real them. So they kind of like tried to, you know, baffle people with you know the outer bullshit right maybe flashing around their money and um what they could purchase what they had purchased and you know that kind of thing person like being on display they like being admired but it's like you you you've not been impressed with that you have not been impressed with that. So they want to fight for you. You know, um, this, um, this outfit that this horse is wearing reminds me of those, um, you know, those bouts that, um, the tournaments, sorry, that these knights would fighting and maybe, and maybe 
this favor here. Maybe Miss Just Dreamcatcher. Maybe that's the favor that you gave them. That they would display, you know. You made them believe in dreams again. And that dreams can come true. I, I just feel like somebody that was so jaded, you know. So jaded by life. And it's like you've renewed their hope that, you know, dreams do come true. And some somebody can truly love you for who you are, you know? Okay. What's the most important message or most important thing that spirit wants you to know right now? What's the most important thing that spirit wants you to know right now? What's the most important thing Spirit wants you to know right now? Underneath the deck, we have life purpose. Okay. Um, I do think your person searching for purpose. Um, but Spirit is also saying that you have found your life purpose. And... The energy and joy and the vibrancy and the love that you're radiating um, into the world um, is going to attract um, a lot of peace, a lot of abundance, and a lot of spiritual protection um, to you. What's the most important thing that you need to know right now? Most important thing that spirit wants you to know right now. We have emotional freedom. Okay. Um, I think you have inspired this person to really put themselves out there um, and to really free their feelings. I feel it's someone who always kept their feelings compressed inside um, and didn't want to show people just how magical they were. Because this is like the first Pegasus um, that I'm seeing without the unicorn horn. This person didn't want to show people how magical they were. Um, I feel it's someone who was taught to keep their emotions inside. But you are showing them that this actual emotional freedom and embracing their emotions um, is actually going to lead to abundance and fertility. You, you have taught them that. We also have here forgiveness and it says I forgive myself and I am forgiven. I think your person's working on that as well. You know, I do think that they're having a hard time forgiving themselves for what they may have done to you um, in the past or, or just things in the past that they're not too proud of. Um, but I think this is also um, a message for you. This is a message recognizing that, you know, maybe there are things in your past that you're not proud of. Um, things that you may not even tell people about. Maybe, you know, you have grave secrets. Secrets that you will take to your grave. But Spirit is reminding you that this was just part of the learning process. Um, this is part. This was just, you know, part of your learning path. You, this is what you came here to learn. So there's no reason to hold yourself hostage um, to the past and the old version of who you were, right? Okay, because you, you've changed. You've changed so much. And they're proud of the work that you're doing. Um, I'm really getting big Empress vibes from this whole card. Because look at the rabbits. I know that's fertility. We have the rose. It's like it's all of nature saluting you. And then we have the angels up here, right? Offering you divine protection. So the universe is proud of you and you should be proud um, of you too. Whatever you did in the past, you had to do that in order to learn, in order to get the perspectives that you have now that make you so inspirational, right? So Spirit is saying, forgive yourself. This is what you came down here to learn. Okay. All right. Let's get some 3D messages from a person and then we're going to take it to the extended.
um in the extended um we, i'll do a semi-trans um, message from my main guide um janice um about your connection um i'm gonna look at your person's thoughts and feelings um where you're concerned i look at their next actions towards you within one month of you watching this reading and then we will get a message from the ancestors what they want you um to know what do they want to say to you all right so underneath the deck um it says support lean on your inner circle during this time i think this person wants to support you i think in the past you gave this person a lot of spiritual emotion and emotional and physical support um, and they want to return the favor it's very important that this person feel like an equal in your relationship they do not want to be beholding to you they want to be an equal partner okay spiritual lesson this person is in your life to teach you a spiritual lesson so um yes i def i definitely get that that was that's what spirit wants to tell you but this is 3d messages from your person so know that this person knows that you're there to teach them okay both of you guys are each other's greatest teachers and they are learning the lessons they definitely are and I think it's lessons in boundaries, it's lessons in, in, in equity, it's lessons in integrity, and it's lessons in forgiveness, okay, that you're learning, and they are learning from you. What else do they want you to know? Um, this also speak to, speaks to car, a lot of karma as well, okay? And karma is the consequences um, of our actions, or actions, or thoughts, Okay. What else do they want you to know? We have fate. This is a destined partnership. And we pick that up with the lovers and the four of wands. They really do think that this was destiny. Um, that you were brought into, the, brought into their life um, for a purpose. Um, that you are the one. This, this person thinks that you are the one. We have the four of wands. We have the lovers. They know. They know. Some of them may even know um, the terminology twin flames. Put away the computer, working less and having more fun will strengthen your relationship. So this person, maybe some of you guys thus far have had a, a basically an online relationship. Okay, okay, maybe you met up once or twice or whatever it is. You talk on the phone, you talk on the face, you FaceTime each other, whatever, whatever it is. All uh, right. They don't want to do that anymore. Um, because this is preventing you guys from grounding the relationship. They want to ground this relationship. They want to have fun with you. They want to take you out. They want to make memories with you, have experiences where they can touch you, smell you, feel you. Um, it's those kinds of things that they want to do. Um, the tired of technology. <laughs> like Justin Bieber, they're tired. The tired of technology. And rejection. This rejection is actually divine protection. So um, they're also seeing the higher perspectives on what happened between you guys before. Okay. Um, they're realizing that, you know, they would, maybe they would have divinely guided to, to reject you. Because um, if they had accepted your offer back then, this person would have only hurt you. They weren't ready. They weren't ready to accept what you were saying. They weren't ready um, to shift their perspectives on um, love and spirituality. They can be um, a proper partner to you. So they realize they know that, you know, spirit really protected you. Really protected you, you know? All right. So if this feels like you're reading, you can join me in the extended. If not, I ju I'm just grateful that you guys are here. Your likes, this dislikes, they all help with the algorithm. I love it when you guys comment. I do try to reply. Um, those of you who've been buying cups of coffee, supporting the coalition against domestic violence in my country um clicking on the ads everything helps and i'm grateful i have beautiful subscribers um never had a horrible comment in my comment section um it's just been beautiful of course i've had spammers right <laughs> but you know never horrible comments it's just 
lovely, beautiful, um, kind energy. And I thank you guys for that. Okay. All right, my loves. Take care. Bye. Hey, pal three. Welcome to your reading. And today we're asking, what have they realized about you and the connection? Okay. All right. So let's get into this. And I'm going into my newest deck. It's called Messages from the Ancestors. So we're going to have a significator for your person's energy towards you. At this time, Power 3. Power 3, I'm feeling a little down. Because <laughs> I recorded the extended of Power 2. And then I forgot to upload it. And then because I took like maybe a couple days before I started recording again. Um, I forgot that I didn't upload and I deleted it. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, ooh. Is this a mountain lion? I think it is. It might be a mountain lion. Sorry about telling you all that. I just have to get it out. Pal three. You are being hunted. You are being hunted by this person. Um, they are in total predator energy. They are circling you. I'm not saying that to scare you. This is just the energy that they are in. You are this cat, right? Right, cats, they're deeply spiritual. Cats represent the spiritual realm, the unknown, the mysterious, and sensuality and sexuality all in one. And they're very magnetized um, towards you right now. So they're looking, forget the horse, the horse ain't in it. So they're looking at you they're a big cat you're the little cat they see you as innocent and beautiful sexy and all of that um and there's something about you that activates this person's animal instincts okay um this cat also likes that even though you look domesticated there's something very feral and wild um, about you you just activate all this person's animal instincts um, and they want to hunt you down. But at the same time, they want to protect you um, because they do recognize you as part of their soul farm. But they do see you guys as very different. <clears throat> I see a person as someone. They got a big ego. We're, we're not going to sugarcoat it. They have a big ego. Um, and I feel like they could be in the public eye. Right. This person is here on this precipice and I get the feeling like there's some kind of crowd. Or something like that. So I do think they often spread their big cat energy around. Okay. But they're not interested in the crowd. They're, their head is turned away from the crowd. They are interested in you. This this innocent here. So I feel like this person have a lot of fans. You know. They keep a lot of people around them. Because they like to be worshipped. They like that kind of praise. They like that kind of external validation. But they are attracted to you. Meanwhile you're busy talking to your spirit guides you don't even have time you don't got time pal three you are talking to your spirit guides all right there energy towards you we have mother so as i said very protective but at the same time i do think that this person um because i want you to notice how her hand is by his neck right Yes, it's a gesture of comfort and love, but it's also a gesture of possession. And she's holding him um, right around one of the most vulnerable points um, in their body. So at any time, she can decide to do something good, something bad. And I think that is a hole that this person um, wants over you. They want to be there to nurture. They want to be there to protect. But I feel like this person also wants to be there to control. Because she can also shift the position of his head um, where where her hands are right now. I see one of her fingers are touching um, his ear. So they also want you um, to listen to them. I'm also getting as well. As much as they want to nurture and protect you, they also feel your nurturing and, and protective energy um, around them. You remind them of their mother. And that has good and bad connotations for this person because... I do get that this person, they're very enmeshed with their mother, but they also view their mother 
as controlling and manipulative. And it is so interesting that I would say that power three. Oh gosh, I hope your reading doesn't go on too long. Um, because I screenshotted something yesterday. And you know, I, you guys, I love this guy. Um, where is it? His, <clears throat> his name is Biomias. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that right on Instagram. B-Y-E-R-M-E-A-S. And it says... An inability to commit when it comes to intimate relationships is an unconscious attempt to break free from the enmeshment we have with our mothers. Because he's ta he takes things from a masculine perspective. So he's talking about masculine energy here. What we perceive to be suffoc the suffocating nature of intimate relationships is actually the suffocating reality of the relationship we had with our mothers. We feel smothered by our partner's desire to connect, to be reassured, to feel our deepest heart and to experience our unwavering commitment because we can't discern between the pain of our past and the love contained within the present moment. This is what I'm feeling. At times, our partners may embody similar qualities from her anxiousness to her tendency to control and micromanage, but for us to come to a conclusion about that and name it as suffocating or something rather than becoming curious about the complexities of her human experience and provide the safety required to help her free herself from these patterns shows that there's something much more deeper there for us to uncover. And I feel this is the energy that I'm feeling when I'm looking at this mother card. There is something about you that reminds you of their mother, which they are magnetized towards, but they are also repelled by. So it's a, it's a very pu push and tug energy. And, and they feel your presence all the time. They feel your presence all the time. And you're always teaching this person something new. Now, I, I do get um, the presence here. Um, of some ancestral energy, perhaps a grandfather spirit or even a father who may have crossed over that's directing this as well. Um, I think this person might be connected to you though, protecting you, person that is watching. So I'm feeling a father energy that may have crossed over or grandfather energy. They are here directing things at this point in time. But this person feels your energy. This person feels your spirit. This person sees your wisdom. Um, and as I told you, they feel like you are protecting them, but at the same time, they f it makes them feel like a child. There's something about you that triggers um, all this person's inner child wounds. So as much as they want to be there and they might want to do like, just, just life with you, you know, the mundane things. Um, they're not healed from their past hurts and pain and they keep projecting it onto your relationship. This is what I feel. Anyways, let's see what they have realized. Maybe, and maybe that's something that they've realized. That they've been um, projecting a lot of their hurt and pain um, on this connection. And it's interesting with this deck, um, it kept falling over, falling over. And I was saying, but this, that feels like a tall moment. I had to put clear quartz, oops, in here in order to keep it steady. So I feel like this person needed clarity, okay? Um, they just were not seeing things um, clearly. So I've put clear quotes in there. May they see things clearly now, <laughs> right? But it, it just kept falling down. All right, so let's have a look. What have they realized? You know what I just realized? I just realized I didn't delete some old videos. And I probably only have 31 minutes. I mean, the readings have been going for like 25, but I feel like yours might be longer because we took a long time there. All right, what have they realized? That they are your emperor, your counterpart, that they want to be there for you. Um, this person's dressed as Father Christmas. Okay, so this is someone who wants to provide, someone who wants to make you happy. There's something about wanted to see you light up just want they want to be the bring of your joy 
Yeah, that's what they want to be. They want to be the bringer of your joy. Right? They want to be the reason why you laugh, the reason why you smile, you know, the reason why you glow. I do think as well that this person, um, their love language might be giving gifts. It may, I don't think it's verbal. It might be giving gifts. So they might want to um, give you some sort of gift. I'm also getting, um, you see the staff in his hand. And staff for me, always a symbol of spiritual energy and also sexual energy. Um, they might want to give you, you know, that kind of gift, right? Because maybe their love language is also physical touch, but specifically sex. So I do think that this they want to make you happy in whatever way that they can. All right. So let's see. What have they realized um, about this connection? Ooh. King of Swords. Right. So that's that's seeing things clearly. So we have Aquarius coming through there. They feel like they destroy this connection though. And maybe that's why um, that card was signaling tower, tower moment, tower moment. Ten of swords in reverse. Yep. And there's Humpty Dumpty. Um, we have the five of wands. And that's Br'er Br Rabbit and the sticky um, sta scarecrow thing. Five of wands in reverse. We have the Three of Pentacles. <clears throat> we have the Twelve Cups. And we have the Ten of Wands. All right, what have they realized? What have they realized? And what they've realized is epitomized by this King of Swords. So I could even say... What have what are they now seeing clearly, right? Because that's what they're seeing clearly. What are they now seeing clearly? What have they realized? Um, that they destroyed this connection. You see the axe in his hand. That they cut down this tree that you guys were growing, building together. Okay? And it's only after that they cut down the tree that they saw that it was ex incredibly stable. Um, that you guys have been building this tree over lifetimes that was incredibly strong that was part of their legacy that you were a gift that the ancestors um brought to them they finally see saw all of that but it's only story after they cut this down so i felt i feel like this person sabotaged this connection they destroy this connection with some sort of act or actions or it could have been a series of acts and actions because we do have the ten of swords in reverse here and for me, the Ten of Swords in reverse is lingering deep betrayal that we just can't seem to let go of. So what have they realized or what are they seeing clearly? That they've hurt you and they don't know how to put this back together. We have this card has Humpty Dumpty. Okay, they don't know how to put this back together. And look, Humpty Dumpty didn't even fall on the ground in this card. Humpty Dumpty fell on sharp rocks. So, you know, that smash, you know, that can't come back. So they feel like they, it can't come back. They feel like they've just done so much. There is no way that this can be repaired. But they do want to repair it. They do. Um, they do want to end any kind of beef between you guys. Squash any kind of drama between you guys. And there's also, you see, when the card is up right here, this person is stuck to some kind of sticky situation. Okay. And if I remember the story... I think Prayer Rabbit was trying to steal from the scare scarecrow or something. So they might have tried to do some sort of harm or ha get some kind of one-upmanship on you or they may have cheated you out of something or maybe cheated on you. But now they're stuck um, in this sticky situation with this fake person. So your person might even be with somebody else, a fake person, and this person is not um, letting them go. I think it's Prayer Rabbit and Tar Baby is the name of this story, right? So this star baby here is not letting your person go. But they want to get out of that situation. I think your person is tired of living this life of drama that they've been living. I feel like in the past, your person was addicted to chaos. And you know that people like that. They, mu they must have drama in their life in order to feel alive. So I feel this is what happened with your person. And now that they are healing, now that they are growing, 
This drama doesn't magnetize them or excite them anymore. This drama just strains them. So they're trying to get themselves free from some kind of sticky situation. They realize they have to extricate themselves, right? If they want to build something with you and they feel like they can build something with you, they feel like you have this Midas touch where <clears throat> you turn everything into gold. And that's what the, that's what the Empress does. That's her power. Um, she can make anything grow and she can make anything successful. So this person sees the value um, in you and they see the value in this love. Look, it's two of cups. So that's what they're also now seeing clearly and what they realize that this is a real deal. And that they had this real deal um, in the palm of your hand. They had it in the palm of their hand and they destroyed it. They realize that they, they miss you. Um, that they feel abandoned without you. You know, it's like when you were in their life, you, they were so happy, so comfortable. Um, they didn't think about nurturing the relationship. They didn't think about that. But now they're seeing what you brought to their life. Um, and this, they're, just, they're just in a lot of sadness and grief and they're burdened by what they did in the past. What they did in the past. So that's what they realized, guys, that they hurt you, hurt you really deep, um, that they destroyed or sabotaged this connection. And instead, they traded it for some kind of tar baby here, a fake person who is clingy, codependent and don't, doesn't want to let them go. Um, they've, they've realized your value and that they can build something with you. They realize that this is the real deal, the real McCoy true love that they only dreamt about. This person daydreaming under this coconut tree. They've only dreamt about a love um, like this and they, they threw it all away. So they're grieving. They're grieving. So it's like they're surveying all that they've done and all that has happened. And they're like, what the fuck have I done? What's the most important thing that spirit wants you to know right now? What's the most important thing that spirit wants you to know right now? And this is the true love reading cards. And the tarot cards that I'm using is the whimsical tarot, as you know. Underneath the deck, we have the distorted feminine. Okay, so yes, your person might be connected to the distorted feminine, but spirit is saying, there's also a calling on your life right now for you to also release this energy that is in within you, that is within you. Now, the distorted feminine is the perpetual victim. They are clingy. They are codependent. Um, they feel disempowered or helpless. Um, they don't take accountability for their own emotions or accountability for the part they may have played. In a particular situation, so Spirit is saying there's a bit of that energy that is also um, within you. All right, what's the most important thing that Spirit wants you to know here? We have compatibility. All right. I feel like when you guys just met, you guys were focused on how different you guys were, Okay. Okay, you had red hair, they had brown hair. You know those those weird little things, right? You always focus on everything that was different. But now that you guys are getting a higher view of things, a higher perspective on things, right? You're both um, here on birds, so you're taking that higher perspective. You guys are realizing that you guys are exactly the same. It's just that one person's holding a feminine energy and one person's holding a masculine energy. You guys are incredibly the same and you guys are on the same journey. Even the mats that they're sitting on are the same. They're wearing the same clothes. You guys are exactly the same. And 
whatever incompatibilities that you guys perceived from before was only surface value. It was only on the surface. Deep down inside, at cellular level, at soul level, you guys are exactly, exactly the same. Exactly. Maybe even the same soul. And even how the birds are facing each other, it's that kind of same yin-yang um, kind of vibe. Okay. What does your person want you to know right now? Let's get some 3D messages um, from your person. Yeah. 3D messages from your person. Let's go. Let me just give it a little shuffle. Right. Um, we have retreat. Time alone or in nature will help you recharge. I do think that this person is spending a lot of time alone. In fact, um, the card that was most significant was the King of Swords. And there he is um, in the woods, maybe with a trusty companion, um, a dog, a pet, something like that. But I think this person um, is just taking time out for themselves right now. What do they want you to know? We have play hard. Find time to laugh, goof off, and enjoy each other. I think this person might be planning to contact you because um, they want to spend some time with you. Um, they want to rekindle this relationship and really kind of re-inject the joy that you guys felt when you guys first met each other. You know that in the beginning, fresh kind of love. Um, they want to go back um, to that place and this time really put in the effort. I think also as well that this person is trying to find um, their own joy um, and the things that make them happy. I think there's a person that, you know, they may have been so focused on maybe achieving in the world and um, maybe how they appear to others that they didn't think about what makes them happy. We have integrity. Does the situation align with your values and morals? I feel as well that this person is trying to level up. Um, they're, they're trying to rise to your vibration and they're trying to be as honest and as authentic with themselves and with others um, as possible. I'm also getting that they're trying to get in touch with what are their own core values um, and beliefs. I don't think that they know um, what they believe in, what they stand for. Um, maybe they've been holding on to old pro programming from their parents, grandparents, but in terms of what they believe um, about life, love, and, and different philosophies, I don't think this person knows. I think this person is trying to to find themselves as corny, as cliche, and as cliche as that sounds. We have soulmate. Your soulmate loves and accepts and respects you unconditionally. So they want you to know that, that they do know that you are their soulmate, their twin flame, and they do love you and respect you. And accept you unconditionally. So, but, and they want to be worthy of that regard, of your regard. Okay, they want you to love, accept, and respect them um, as well. But they do see um, your value. We have regret. Someone feels remorse for the way that they treated you. Well, it was the first, first message that came out, really. Um, this person has been thinking a lot about the past um, and the way they took the situation for granted and they took you for granted and the way that they underestimated your value or just like disregarded you completely. Um, and if they can do it all over again, they would do things differently. Okay, because now um, they, they have the knowledge, you yeah. know, they have the knowledge. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do in the extended, I'm going to get a semi-trans message from my guide, my main guide, Janice. 
um, and she's going to let us know what your person wants you to know and any message from spirit regarding your situation. Then I'm going to look at your person's thoughts and feelings for you. Look at their next actions towards you within a month of you watching this reading. And then I'm going to get a message from the ancestors um, about the situation. And they can choose to talk about anything they, they want. Underneath the deck, we have energy. <laughs> energy, right? Um, a life force is flowing. Open yourself to receive the power from within. So this feels like a lot of sexual energy. And it feels like a lot of spiritual energy. Spirit is saying, this is where your focus needs to be on right now. And I'm really getting a kind of manifestation vibes um, with this. Um, because sexual energy is, you know, creative energy. And spiritual energy. I always, like, see this card as the Ace of Wands. And that's about um, a divinely inspired idea. So Spirit is saying that, you know, there's something that's waiting to burst out from you. Something that you're meant to create and give to this world. And they want you to open up um, to that power. What's the advice? Oh, okay. It's a sanctuary. Embrace your need for solitude. So your person's spending a lot of time alone. But Spirit is saying this is also a good time um, to spend some time alone yourself. Your inner sanctuary calls you. Renew yourself. And thrive, and then remember this message was about letting what is inside burst forth. So spirit is saying right now, um, focus on yourself. Focus on about on deepening your receptivity to spirit, on the development of your spiritual gifts, on your hobbies, on your creativity, and the more that you blossom, um, is the more attractive you become, and attractive in many ways, attractive in terms of, you know, attracting partners, but also in terms of the law of attraction. You become a vortex whereby anything that you perceive, you can receive. Okay? At my love, so if this feels like what you've been getting in your psyche about your situation, join me in the extended and we're going to explore it further. Um, if not, I just thank you for tuning in. Everything that you do on this channel helps with the algorithm. Dislikes, likes, comments, shares, buying cups of coffee to help. Um, the Coalition Against Domestic Violence in my country. Whatever you do helps with the algorithm, and I am so grateful. Take care. Bye.